Okay, so we are going to wrap up the unit and uh, work on the review sheet for the chapter on trigonometry. And what I'd like you to do is have your calculator out. And let's look at question number one. In question number one, it says in triangle ABC, so I'm going to draw a triangle. It's going to be a right triangle. They tell me that angle C is 90. So I can put A and B wherever I'd like. But they mentioned that side A to B is going to be 52, and side A to C is going to be 48. What the question's asking for is the cosine of B. Please remember that the cosine in Sokotoa, the cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at, uh, I'm going to look at angle B, and I'm going to say, all right, which side's adjacent? Well, the adjacent side is actually going to be side C to B, which we don't know, over the hypotenuse. So we need to figure out what side uh, B to C is. Well, how can we do that? Well, if I call it X, I can, I can do the Pythagorean theorem because we have a right triangle. We know two sides, and you want to find the third. So I can do X squared plus 48 squared equals 52 squared. Okay, so now what I would do is I would go to my calculator. So we're going to do, uh, I'll do 48 squared. And while I'm here, I'll do 52 squared, so I have it done. So we have um, 2304 and 2704. So x squared plus 2304 equals 2704. When I uh, subtract, you'll get x squared. When I subtract 2304, you'll be left with 400. And then the square root of 400 should be 20. So the third side of the triangle ends up being a 20. So let's go back to the question. If we want the cosine of b, what's adjacent to b would be the 20 and the hypotenuse is going to be 52. So that should be choice number three. Okay? Let's look at example number two. It says find the value of x to the nearest degree. All right, so again, I go to the angle. I identify the parts that are in the triangle. The 15 is the hypotenuse for sure. Now, what is the 10? Is the 10 opposite the x or next to the x? To me, it looks like it's way across the way, so that should be opposite. Now, if you go back and look at Sokotoa, Sokotoa with opposite hypotenuse, that, that should be the sine. So the sine of x is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse. All right, so please remember, in questions where you want to find the angle, this is where we have to do our inverse. So to find x, I have to do the inverse sine of 10 over 15. Okay, so I'm going to do the second sine of 10 divided by 15. And what this will do is it will give me a degree measure. Uh, this should be about 41.8. What do they want this rounded to? So that should be 42 degrees. They want that to the nearest degree. All right, whereas in question B, now from the angle 35, the 30 is the opposite, and the X is not the hypotenuse, that's the adjacent, right? Because wouldn't this be the hypotenuse up here? We're not going to use that. So opposite and adjacent should be tan. So the tan of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. This is when we have to cross-multiply. So if I put the tan 35 over 1 and cross-multiply, we would get x tan 35 is equal to 30. I'll divide by the tan 35. x is equal to. So we'll go back to my calculator. I'm going to do 30 divided by the tan of 35. And a very similar answer, but slightly different, that would be 42.8. Okay, 
Um, example number three, uh, these were what we call the co-functions. So I would encourage you to go back and, and watch the video we did on co-functions. And what we said is uh, for functions like sine and cosine, they're complementary. So what that meant, again, was that the angles, okay, and then the angles end up being um, the, the 2x and the 3x minus 10. But what we said was that the angles add up to 90. So that the 2x and the 3x minus 10 together are complementary. They add up to 90. So that should be 5x minus 10 is equal to 90. Uh, if I add the 10, you'll get 100. And if we divide by 5, you end up with 20. Okay, which statement cannot be used to find the length of x? So a question like this can be a little tricky because there can be um, a couple of right answers here. Actually, three of these answers will be correct methods. One of them is incorrect. So unfortunately, the only way to really do it is to go through them one by one uh, and do process of elimination. All right, so let's look at the first, uh, the first choice, choice one. That one says the tan of of 35 is equal to 8 over x. So let's look at the 35. And remember tan. Tan is the TOA, isn't it? So what that would mean is that that would mean that the 8 would have to be the opposite and the x would have to be the adjacent. Is that true? And I believe 8 is opposite the 35 and the x right here is next to the 35. So to me that, that looks okay. That's, that's true. So that's not going to be our answer. Okay, let's look at let's look at uh, choice two. This one says the cosine of thirty-five. And the first thing you might say to yourself right now is cosine would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the question becomes: Is the x adjacent and is twenty-six the hypotenuse? Well, from the thirty-five degrees. I think the x is, is adjacent, that's next to it, right? And the 26 is the hypotenuse, so that looks good. Okay, let's look at choice number three. Now you might say in choice three and four, well this, this definitely seems suspicious because I see 55 degrees. But keep in mind please that if this is a right triangle and we have 90 down here and we have a 35 degree angle to the right, then wouldn't that mean that you have to have 55 degrees in your third angle? We need to make 180 degrees. So when I do sine of 55, now this is SOHCAHTOA, so that's S-O-H, the question now becomes, is the uh, x the opposite and is the 26 the hypotenuse? Well, from the 55 degrees, is the x side opposite? Yes. Is the 26 the hypotenuse? Yes. So that looks good. So by default, the answer has to be four. Um, I think it's probably a smart idea to go through and make sure that it is our correct answer because who knows, maybe we made a mistake in an earlier part. All right, so let's take a look at that. So the tan of 55, so tan would be opposite over adjacent. So from the 55 degrees, which would be up here at the top, is the 8 opposite it? And I think that is where our error is. Right, wouldn't x be opposite that angle? So this is definitely incorrect, which makes it our answer. Okay, example number five. So questions like this, we have to draw our own picture. Um, it says that the distance from the base of a house to the base of a nearby tree is 78 feet. All right, let's draw this. So we have a tree. We have a house. And the question is saying that the distance from the base to the base is 78. So that's the ground. Now, Tomas stands at a distance of 45 feet from the base of the tree. Okay, so I'll draw Tomas. Okay, he's 45 feet from the tree. and observes the angle of the elevation to the top of the tree to be 59. Okay, so let's draw that. Okay. 
if the tree were to fall towards the house, would it would the top of the tree hit the house? All right, so let's. I think we have to do is we have to figure out how high the tree is. I mean, we can't really figure anything else out at this point. So from the fifty nine, wouldn't the height of the tree be the opposite? And wouldn't the forty five be the adjacent? So the opposite adjacent should be tangent. So the tangent of the angle would be equal to the opposite over the adjacent. So x would be 45 tan 59. So I'll go to my calculator, 45 tan 59. Um, and that's going to be about 75 feet. So the tree is 75 feet tall. So the question is asking, if the tree were to topple over, would the tree hit the house? So it's always kind of like the, the envisioning the diagram now looking something like this. So the tree was standing up. Here's my house. And now the tree has fallen over. So here's the tree now. Okay. Did the tree hit the house? I don't think so, because how far away is the, the tree to the house? 78 feet, but the, the tree is only 75 feet tall. Okay. So I would say, no, the tree would be about three feet short. Alright, so for the top of a lighthouse, the angle of depression to a speedboat is 23 degrees. Alright, so remember how depression works. Depression was the horizontal down. So that would be from the horizontal looking down to the boat. And the boat is 100 meters from the base of the lighthouse. Find the distance from the top of the lighthouse to the boat. So the top of the lighthouse directly to the boat. Uh, the one thing, if you remember and go back and watch the videos, we said that whenever they give you angles of depression, you should rewrite them as angles of elevation. So I'm going to use the 23 as an alternate interior angle. Okay. Um, but that will now kind of exclude that 23 and label the opposite adjacent hypotenuse from the 23 inside the triangle. So the x will be your hypotenuse, and the 100 will be the adjacent. So that looks like a, a cosine, right? That's the cosine's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So that's x cos 23 is equal to 100. And if we divide by the cosine of 23, Okay, we'll do 100 divided by the cos of 23, and that should be about, what do they want this to? The nearest, it doesn't say, so I think we can, we can round this. We'll say it's about, you know, I'll say about 109 meters. Okay, here's another angle depression question this time. Uh, they're talking about the angle of depression from the cliff. So let's say you have a cliff to point A on the ground. All right, so let's draw the triangle. Here's point A on the ground. And the angle of depression is 35 degrees. So again, that is horizontal down. Now it does say point A is 280 feet from the base of the cliff. So I'll go here on the bottom. How tall is the cliff? We'll label that x. Remember, please, again, that if they give you the angle of depression, don't use the one that's outside. Write the alternate interior angle. So from that angle that I just wrote, 35 in red, the x would be the opposite, and the 280 would be the adjacent, wouldn't it? So that should be the tangent. The tangent of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Cross multiply. So that should be 280 tan 35. So 280 tan 35. 
Okay, and then what that's the nearest foot, so we'll say x is about 196 feet. Okay, and the accompanying diagram, the base of a 15-foot ladder rests on the ground four feet from a six-foot fence. If so, the, the ladder is leaning against the fence and against the building. Part A, if the ladder touches the top of the fence and the side of the building, what is the angle that the ladder makes with the ground? So really what they're looking for is they're looking for this down here, the angle of elevation. Now you have a choice. You can use either the small right triangle or the big right triangle. I would say in a case like this, you're probably best off using the small right triangle. And that's because we know two of the sides, right? We know the six, we know the four. So the six would be the opposite. Then the four would be the adjacent. So that should be a tan question, right? The tan of the angle is equal to the opposite over the adjacent. Again, when you find the angle, this is where we do the inverse. The inverse tan of six over four will give us x. So this is where I go to my calculator and I press um, second tan of six over four. Okay, they want this to the nearest uh, degree, so that should be about 56 degrees. Part B, using the angle found in part A, so I'm gonna use this angle over here, determine how far up or how far the top of the ladder which is up the building. So we want to see it really, not how high the building is, but how high the, the ladder goes up the building. So I want to really get, I'll change colors here. Let me erase that blue. They're really looking now for this height. Not the height of the building, but how high up the wall the ladder reaches, okay? Um, and we'll call it x this time, we'll call it y, we are used an x in this example. So this is going to kind of force us into the big triangle now. But think about what we know now. They said use the, the part A answer, which was 56 degrees. So no more x, we can replace that with 56. And in the big triangle, right, wouldn't it look something like this? So now what we can do is we can use for part B from the 56, the Y would be the opposite and the 15 will be the hypotenuse. So that should be SOH, right? So let's write it down here, the sine of 56 is equal to the opposite, which was the Y, over the hypotenuse, which is the 15. We'll cross multiply, and you get y is equal to 15 sine 56. All right, so 15 sine 56, and they want this to the nearest foot, so this will be about 12 feet. Okay. And then finally, number nine is our last question. Um, this is one of those double triangle questions. It says, from point A on the bank of a river, the angle of elevation to the top of the tree is 43 degrees. So we have to write that in ourselves, okay, everybody? So again, from point A, the angle of elevation to the top is 43 degrees. As shown in the figure below, point B is 100 feet beyond point A and on the same straight line. From point B, the angle of elevation is 32 degrees. And that makes sense. The, the concept that the further away you are from an object will decrease your angle of elevation. The question now says find AC to the nearest foot. So that's what we have to find is A to C. Okay. So, um, you know, uh, what I generally like to do in questions like these is I like to use the law of signs. Certain teachers might do it other ways, but um, I'm, I'm a fan of, of using the law of signs in these questions. Again, the way the law of signs works is it's going to be take a side over the sine of the angle, take a side over the sine of the angle. And you can use this in any of the triangles. Okay, It doesn't just have to be a right triangle. 
okay? So, what I'll start with is I like to find all the missing angles first, all right? And if they give me that I have a 43 degree angle, then what I can do is if I take 180 and minus 43, that should give me 137 degrees. That would be the supplement of the 43. Okay, and then um, for example, the top angle on the skinny triangle, well, if I add the 137 and the 32, that gives you 169, and 180 minus 169 um, should give us 11. So the third angle in the skinny triangle would be 11. And then in the, uh, the triangle with the tree in it, I can use um, the 43 and the 90. So if I add the 43 and the 90 and subtract that from 180, that should give me 47. All right, so I mean, it doesn't take that much effort to uh, go through and find all the missing angles. All right, so using the law of sines, this is what I like to say. Start in the triangle where they give you a side length, okay? That's going to be the skinnier triangle on the, on the right, okay? It's going to be this triangle right here. Let's use this triangle first, okay? So if I use my law of sines, hold on. So if I use the law of sines, take the side 100 over the sine of the angle that is opposite that, which would be the 11. All right, I'm going to find y next. Now, where's y going to be? Y should be a side that is in both triangles. See, I want to get into the other triangle. So I have to find a side that is in that triangle, but that's also in the triangle I'm working in. The only side that does that is this right here, A to the top of the tree. Now, in the yellow highlighted triangle, which angle is opposite that? That will be the 32. Okay? So let's cross multiply. Y sine 11 is equal to 100 sine 32. We'll divide by the sine of 11. All right, and your calculator will do this all for you. Okay, you just got to type it in exactly the way we have it written. All right, so let me clear this. We're going to do 100 sine 32. Close parentheses. Divide that by the sine of 11. Now, we should do four decimal places here. All right, so I'm going to do 277.7224, okay? 277.7224. Make sure I got that right. 277.7224. All right, good. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do it again. Okay, I have to do the law of signs again, but this time now I want to use the other triangle, the triangle that has the X in it. So I'm going to use this triangle. Okay? So let's now run it. I'm going to use the side we just found, 277.7224, over the side of, now in the blue triangle, that is 90 degrees is opposite that. X is what we want to find, and which angle is opposite the X? The 47. So we have X, hold on, my computer was just auto-saving. X sine 90 is equal to 277.7224 sine 47. We'll divide by the sine of 90. Okay, sorry, I ran out of space a little bit there. But here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take the 277 number, I'm going to multiply it by the sine of 47, and I'm going to divide it by the sine of 90, okay? So here we go. Now the good news is I already have that number in my calculator, so I'm just going to press up and enter, so I get the exact value. So that number times the sine of 47, close parentheses, divided by the sine of 90. Okay, and then we just have to figure out what they want us rounding to. 
round to the nearest foot. So that should be about 203 feet. All right. There, you know, there are alternative ways to do that question. Um, I tend to like to do the law of signs method because it works in every case. You could use some Sokotoa in the right triangle part. But um, if you have any questions, again, feel free to email me, uh, true.bedard at limerickschools.org. And uh, I'll talk to you guys soon.